So we have a comment here from Hamid Reza says, please cover the JCPOA agreement. Where is it going? Mm. I don't usually flex, but I, I must say the truth. And this is, I mean, this channel, me, I'm one of the only people um, who's covering the Iran nuclear deal, like actually on the ground, independently. Um, and I have a whole playlist on the channel. And this is, this is easily, I mean, one of the biggest foreign policy domains, right? No question. Now, the whole thing, it was really close to being signed. I know some people say, oh, it was weeks away from being signed. It was days away from being signed. It was close. Okay, I don't, I don't, no one can, we don't have a crystal ball, but um, it was very close. And of course, the war in Ukraine started. <laughs> there are a lot of people pissed about this, you know, because they're saying, oh, Ru Russia held up the nuclear deal and it's their fault. And for two reasons, because not only the war started, but um, the, uh, the Russians, they, they, they demanded a written guarantee. They said to the Americans, listen, the whole point about the Iran deal is that Iran caps its nuclear program and in exchange... The United States lifts sanctions on Iran. And Russia said, if everything goes back to normal and you do lift the sanctions, we don't want you to put new sanctions, fresh sanctions on Iran because they are dealing with Russia, right? Because right now there are so, there are so many sanctions on Russia, more than Iran, actually. Um, so on Russia, there are well over 5,500 sanctions. And so the idea is that if you as a country or a company you have business dealings with Russia, you will get sanctioned too. That's the whole idea. That's how they isolate countries, right? So you, you basically turn Russia into a pariah. And the Russians, they wanted a guarantee that Iran will not be punished with the secondary sanctions for having ties with the, with, with the Kremlin. And the, the Americans were like, fuck you, no. <laughs> I mean, the, I, I understand slightly their position because this has nothing to do really with the nuclear deal. It's sort of an extra thing. But, but, it makes total sense because, again, why do you think they've been negotiating this for, for eons? I mean, the original deal and then now for the last year, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm covering this thing very closely. They, they're really, really trying hard. So I don't, I don't think it's fair to say the Russians are trying to sabotage the deal. That's bullshit. The, the Russians tried harder than anyone to make sure the deal uh, succeeds, right? Um, again, I'm not saying the other parties, because there's, uh, there's many of them, uh, I'll, I'll count them in a second for you, but uh, th that they weren't trying, but the Russians really, one of, one of the most, they wanted this to, to succeed. So I don't think it's fair to say, oh, they're sabotaging it or something. No, it's just a protection, because if, you, if the deal is back to normal, and then Iran is hit like that, I don't know, and uh, that, that wouldn't be fair. Now, on the other hand... Uh, the Iranians are saying some other things, for example, that uh, weren't resolved. So in Iran, there's the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC. And the IRGC is designated in the United States as an FTO. FTO means Foreign Terrorist Organization, okay? Those are sanctions. That's what it means. And Iran is demanding that the United States lifts the IRGC from this... FTO list. So they want the, the IRGC delisted as a terrorist organization. And um, this, is, this is, of course, a huge, this is a really, really big deal. And the Americans, I mean, do, don't take my word for it. Look at the press. Like, just, just look at the headlines, honestly. Um, <laughs> people are really, really angry about this uh, in, in the media. Chairman of Joint Chiefs opposes delisting Iran's IRGC as terrorist organization. Delisting the IRGC as a terror group would send a terribly wrong message, says Israel's ambassador. I mean, okay, Israel is going to say that. We know that. <laughs> Top general says that is Iran's Quds force should stay uh, on the terrorist list. I mean, it's not just officials from Israel and the U.S. saying that. It's also in the media. This is kind of like, no, you're, you're giving Iran too many concessions and blah, blah, blah. My point here, I just want to go back... To, to what I was saying is that I don't think it's 100% fair or correct, factually correct, to say that, oh, it's just the Russian demand that was holding up the deal. This is also a big point of contention. That's why there's, it's still being discussed. Remember when they tell you, oh, Donald Trump is so different from Biden and the Democrats and Republicans are not the same? No, they are exactly the same. They, are, they both support this, right? So, um, you know, obviously it's true that... Uh, um, this is an, this is sort of an improvement based on Trump's behavior, but the, you cannot say that the Biden administration haven't been dragging their feet. 
it's the Iran deal is still not in place. We're, we are in, we've gone through 2021. We're in 2022. A lot of people were saying, oh, you see, Russia's blocking the deal and they are sabotaging the deal. It's not true. The, the terrorist label is the biggest point right now. I don't know what's going to happen, man. I don't have a crystal ball, but a, a lot of people are quite uh, pessimistic now uh, because there's, there's both these issues. I think, honestly, the IRGC thing is, is a much bigger sticking point because, you know, the idea that, okay, you know, we'll give Iran an exemption, even as unlikely as that sounds, <laughs> it's still more likely than the IRGC thing because there's really fundamentally no difference between Republicans and Democrats. When it comes to foreign policy and um, how they treat Iran, you, you saw Trump stealing Iranian fuel on the way to Venezuela and Biden did the same thing and they, they both sold it off. Like, that's, that's piracy, literally piracy. You're stealing a cargo and then selling it for, um, for money. There's no difference between them. Same sanctions, same everything. So I'm, I'm not surprised one iota when, when they say there's bipartisan support in Washington to keep this label. Do you see how they are no different from Trump and Pompeo? It's the same gang at the end of the day. It's really the same gang. And their idea here, what they're saying is that, well, look, this label, this terrorist label, it's outside the purview of the nuclear deal. Is it really? Let's take a look because... What the Americans have been doing, the trick that they've been playing, is that they have been um, putting sanctions on Iran and saying, well, this sanction is because of your human rights violations, not because of your nuclear program. And this sanction over here, this is because of your terrorist activities, right? Like, oh, you're... when they say terrorist activities, they basically mean that Iran is supporting the Palestinian resistance against Israel or it's supporting Syria against... Uh, well, pick your, your country. There are 12 over a dozen, you know, trying to get rid of Assad. And then Iran is supporting, um, you know, the, the Hashd al-Shaabi in, in Iraq, the, the, the resistance there, or the resistance in Yemen. Again, you know, it, right now when we talk about the axis of resistance, Iran is at the center of it. So that, that's what they mean when they say malign activities in the region. I, I, Iran is not like setting puppies on fire or stealing candy from babies. They don't like that Iran is, is fucking with their imperialist interests and their Zionist interests. That's what it means. They don't want resistance. And so what they've been doing, this trick, is that they've basically been using this vacuum now where there's no nuclear... Well, the nuclear deal is there. The U.S. left. Let's be clear. They're even using this time to... to, to you know, keep sanctions on Iran and say, we won't lift these because this one's human rights re related and this one's related to terrorism and, and we're not removing these. Hold on a second. Stop right there. If, you, if these journalists writing about the nuclear deal, uh, you know, and most of them have no clue, if they actually bother to read the nuclear deal, they would see in the text that it says very, very clearly that the United States must not do anything that makes it harder for Iran to have economic relationships with the rest of the world. When you go and sanction Iran, that's, you are by definition making it harder for Iran to develop and maintain economic ties and trade with other countries. So that, that's a violation of the deal. It doesn't matter whether you, whether you say this sanction is because you, you burned a puppy alive or you're, you're you know, financing Hamas. It makes no difference. You are violating the deal because the, the deal is that Iran caps the nuclear program and you stop fucking with Iran's economy. It's that simple. And they are violating that and being really, they're trying to be, you know, smart asses and say, oh, well, this is because of that. And this is not related to nuclear. And now when Iran, <laughs> Iran is, is legitimately demanding that they remove this, this uh, um, label, this terrorism label from the IRGC, which Trump did after leaving the deal, they're saying no. So you see once again how Joe Biden is not, Biden's administration is not only just like Trump, he is a carbon copy because he refuses to walk back a Trump move, a Pompeo move. This, this sanction, this designation on the IRGC did not exist before 2019. Trump uh, is the one who pulled out of the deal in May 2018 and then did, uh, uh, you know, he kept going with more and more and more sanctions. And another thing that I can tell you, for example, last year, uh, what the, the Biden administration did is they, they went and they stole Press TV's website, PressTV.com, and they stole uh, the websites for about 30 different foreign news outlets. Again, these are outlets that are not based in the U.S. They do not work in the U.S. They Nothing. They're just .com. And the U.S. government said, we have jurisdiction over anything that ends in .com. And they, they used, Biden used Donald Trump's sanctions against the IRGC to steal those websites. He's basically attacking the press, right? If you, if you take down, again, take down is putting it mildly, steal. If you steal a news outlet's website, 
that's censorship. You are you are effectively blocking the entire planet from accessing this news. You are censoring it. And so they they basically said that press TV is under the control of the IRGC, which Donald Trump placed sanctions on. And that's why they're taking the website. Do you, I mean, listen to this logic. This, this is unbelievable, right? Um, this is like, imagine Iran saying that, you know, this CNN is under the direct command of the CIA, and therefore it's going to take CNN.com's website. Now, I know some of you are going to laugh and say it is. <laughs> yes, but it's, it's outrageous. It's an outrageous move. As much as we dislike CNN, it's, it's not okay to just go and take their website, right? Um, otherwise, we're no different than Trump. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you see this, the absurd logic here? So this is, again, one facet of, of how you can manipulate these sanctions. Do anything you like. You know, attack the press, uh, uh, stop medicine coming in, you name it. And, and, and how Biden not only kept the sanction, but acted on it, used it, right? It's a, you, you could very well just leave it there and not act on it. No, no, they're acting on it. And it's no wonder that Iran wants it removed because it's, out, it's outrageous. It's absurd. Um, so it's, it's really funny to me that the Americans, they want things that are outside the nuclear deal. Uh, like truly outside the nuclear deal. They say things like, oh, we want Iran to cap its ballistic missile program. What the fuck does the ballistic missile program have to do with their nuclear program? The, those are two completely different things. And they say things like, again, supporting Hezbollah, supporting Syria, supporting Hamas, supporting uh, the Hashd al-Shabi, supporting Yemen. They consider this malign activities. This, again, has nothing to do with the nuclear deal. Iran, if it wanted, tomorrow morning could shut down every single nuclear reactor it has and, and disband its entire atomic energy agency, and it would still be supporting resistance efforts. So it, these two things are unrelated, and it's the Americans, and they've even got the Germans to say this at one point, and other Europeans, to say, oh, we should have a nuclear deal 2.0. Nuclear deal 2.0? You're not even following the first one. <laughs> like, they, 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 the Americans left the first agreement, and now they're talking about a second agreement? Man, they're dreaming. Uh, so for me, this is very ironic because I've seen Pompeo and, and Donald Trump, you know, it, it attack the nuclear deal saying it doesn't go far enough. It should include the ballistic missiles and the support for the resistance. And that's why they left. And then when Iran says, hey, uh, how about we just go back to the deal? Like the way it was in April 2018 before Trump pulled out and slapped us with sanctions. And they're like, no, no. May OK, maybe we'll go back, but we're not lifting all the sanctions. How are you going back then to April 2018? It, it, remember, Trump quit in May of 2018. I'm just giving you an idea, like, basically before. How are you going back to how it was when the U.S. was in the deal and Iran was abiding by the deal if you're refusing to lift the sanctions that Trump put in place? Like, this, is, this makes no sense. This is ridiculous. And I just want to make one thing clear because, um, again, this is something that you never hear in the media. And even people in, in independent media who talk about the nuclear deal, they kind of talk out of their asses sometimes. Uh, they say that Iran is building a nuclear weapon. Is there, no, there are no nuclear weapons. Do you understand? A, ger a country like Germany has a nuclear program. They have nuclear reactors. Yes? You can have a nuclear program without nuclear weapons program. Okay? Obviously, to, to build a nuclear weapon, you must have a nuclear program in the first place, but they're not the same thing. The International Atomic Energy Agency, under the additional protocol, they, they have permission, the nuclear scientists, to go into Iran and go into any nuclear facility they like and examine it and inspect it. And they have cameras uh, that are in all of the nuclear facilities that are recording. They have spe special seals on the equipment. You, there's no fucking way that the Iranians are building a weapon without the IAEA knowing. Everybody would know. There's no way to hide this. It's impossible. Again, I, Scott Ritter on the channel here, we spoke in detail about why it's impossible to hide that if you want to go look. And, um, you know, something that's very important is uh, when they say that Iran is violating the deal. You'll see that a lot. The nuclear deal, again, I wish they would read it. Like, please read it. It's not long. It, it says very clearly that if one of the the signatories doesn't respect the deal and uh, they don't hold up their end of the deal, Iran is going to use that as, an, as a, um, a reason, as a justification to also not follow the deal. That's how you, f that's the, under the dispute resolution mechanism, okay? Basically, if there's a fight, there's a disagreement with the deal, how do you fix it? This is, un this is in there, under Article 26 and 37, I believe, right? So, m again, just to explain this very clearly, the United States left the nuclear deal, and not just left it, they also reimposed sanctions. And in the text of the deal, it says if 
if there is significant non-compliance, which is just a fancy way of saying if somebody leaves the deal, and there is reimposition of sanctions, which Donald Trump did, he reimposed sanctions, Iran can treat that as justification to stop abiding by its commitments in part or in whole. I cannot believe I have to explain this a million times. It's like if you sign a contract with somebody, they tear up the contract. How can you expect the other guy who held up their end of the deal to just keep doing what's written in the contract when you left? That makes no sense whatsoever. And that's what they're basically saying. And just to prove again how ridiculous and how much they lie in the media, um, Donald Trump left the nuclear deal in May 2018. For a whole year, so until May 2019, Iran did not change a single thing about its nuclear program. Everything the same. They basically, this demonstrates goodwill. It, it demonstrates goodwill and that they really care about the deal and they're respecting it. And, and for a whole year, they were basically giving the United States time to come back, to change their mind, to, you know, to not escalate. That, if they wanted to escalate, they could have the next stage started doing, you know, uh, um, uh, ramping up uranium enrichment from the limit is 3.67%. Uh, they could have ramped that up or added more centrifuges, could have done anything. They waited a whole year. And then they responded by... Um, you know, tit for tat, because there are many things that happen which people like to forget. Uh, the Israelis assassinated an Iranian nuclear scientist. Uh, his name is Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. On top of that, what happened is the Israelis sabotaged the Karaj and Natanz nuclear facilities in Iran. Uh, they cut the power in one instance, and then there was an explosive device used in another instance. And the Americans killed General Soleimani. So you see all of these attacks. Like, can you imagine if Iran blew up an American nuclear facility? Like, there would be a war. There's a war. You know, if they did that to the Israelis, there would be a war. But they do these things that are really considered, I mean, this is nuclear terrorism. When you go and you blow up a fucking nuclear facility, you know how much the concern they have about Russian forces in Chernobyl right now? Do, do you remember? Or in, in, in um, Zaporizhia? I didn't, I didn't see anywhere the, the same amount of outrage when Israel blew up multiple nuclear facilities in Iran. Are you crazy? Like, do you, see, do you see the double standard here? Like, it's okay to attack a nuclear facility as long as Israel's doing it to Iran. <laughs> you know, the, it's crazy. Like, they, they only care about the environment and having a nuclear disaster if it's, if it's happening uh, um, uh, to Ukrainians and being done by Russians. Otherwise, it's totally fine. Israel can do whatever it wants. So my, just going back to my original point, Iran ramped up its nuclear program only in response to those attacks. So when, they, when the Israelis killed uh, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, they assassinated this nuclear scientist, the Iranian parliament, they voted on a new uh, decree. So they basically said, from here to three months, uh, if, the, if there is no sanctions relief, so if, if the sanctions are not removed, then Iran will stop complying with the additional protocol. So again, just to translate what that means into English, um, they basically gave the United States three months to lift sanctions on Iran, or else they would not allow the, the uh, nuclear inspectors from the UN to film inside the nuclear facilities anymore. It was right after the election in the US, and they were waiting basically for Biden to get inaugurated in January, to get back, because so, he promised to, to get back in the nuclear deal. So they were giving him time to, to get inaugurated and then remove the sanctions and get back in the nuclear deal. So do you see how even after, after, after the worst transgressions and acts of terrorism and assassinations, Iran is always giving a, a headroom, is always leaving an opportunity for diplomacy instead of burning bridges. Every step of the way. And this is what makes me so furious because, I, you know, th this is common sense. Um, it, it's so easy to see that they're demonstrating goodwill and all they do in the media is fucking lie. It, it's really one of the worst. I'm not kidding, man. I cover a lot of topics, right? I, I, uh, the Assange case, uh, the nuclear deal, this is all original reporting. I talk about uh, uh, Syria, I, so many topics. Like I specialize in international affairs and I'm telling you the nuclear deal, they, they, this is one of the, the fields that the media lie in the most. It's really, really, really bad.